welcome Nisanat. Uh, Nisanat is uh, neither an economist <laughs> nor a professional sysadmin, <laughs> but as a good hacker, he tries to dabble in everything that's interesting. So those things as well. And uh, yeah, during his work in continuous integration, see his other talk today or uh, previously at GPN. Mm. Yeah. <laughs> Yesterday. Yesterday, yeah. Um, yeah, he thought, yeah, auctioning works well in other areas to make uh, stuff more efficient. Could it also be used to make uh, the resource allocation in data centers more efficient? So, yeah, please tell us about it. Yeah, so this, hi everyone. Uh, this is, uh, yeah, really only a thought experiment. Uh, if you watched my last talk um, yeah, and got bored to death or not, uh, you may have uh, yeah, experienced you the uh, Q&A that many of the things I thought about were already existent in one way or another. So um, could happen here as well. Um, as I said, uh, I'm not an economist n and not a sysadmin. So uh, yeah, I do a bit of sysadmin work uh, at work, but uh, yeah. There may well be uh, solutions already, which I just don't know because I'm not really deep into this field. Uh, yeah, I do some work with containers and con containerized load somewhere, so, but not with Kubernetes, for example. I did try to do some research into uh, payment models and stuff, but uh, yeah, it's somewhat expensive for those, yeah, like, uh, seven pages. <laughs> so I thought, uh, no, <laughs> no, just uh, no. And this is on the cheap end. If you um, don't try to sell from or buy things from ISO directly, it's going to be like a hundred bucks or something. Uh, so yeah, basics. Uh, if you uh, did any uh, like uh, saw a lecture about uh, why we actually do containerization or virtualization uh, in like hyperscaling or stuff. Um, basically, uh, it's uh, a way or it's used as a way for yeah managing different loads. For example, um, if you do have a HTTP server which is serving requests, or if you accept uh, data from the outside, for example, uh, yeah, email or something, then uh, the load isn't distributed evenly over a day, but uh, for example, during working hours, you get uh, high loads on some work-related services, and uh, yeah, sometimes different loads. But if you have many services, then uh, it kind of balances out. And if you have many virtual machines, then um, yeah, you can just move them from one node to another and uh, get some benefits. And like, yeah, try to get an even profile. Uh, also, if you use virtual machines or containers, which you can move from one node to another, or just turn them off and uh, put them up somewhere else in the case of containers, um, you can end up with uh, like uh, nodes that you can just switch off during the night or something in your huge data center, which uh, allows you to yeah, uh, save energy. Uh, and during a day, you end up with uh, yeah, different amounts of nodes which are actually online. So this helps save some resources. Uh, but then there's another kind of load, which uh, is kind of different. For example, um, yeah, basically batch jobs. They still exist in one way or another. The typically thing you think about are uh, uh, HPC-ish loads. So uh, if a researcher wants to do some number crunching or something, or if you have a service which allows uploading videos and you want to re-encode them, 
in different formats or something uh, to serve different kinds of end users. Also, you might want to regenerate search indices or something, which helps make your actual service uh, more responsive. Or garbage collection tasks, for example. Or, and this was the actual um, reason why I th uh, kept talking about this, uh, CIs. Um, yeah, CIs are jobs that you start once, they run through, and some, yeah, they give you a result of some sort. So, what if we um, try to um, use an auctioning process for leasing out CPU time? Uh, for example, in 15 minute, uh, minute intervals. And to be more precise, options on 50 minutes intervals of CPU time. Or something similar, you can go 30 minutes or something. Um, would this create an incentive? Of course, um, in addition to this leasing out of CPU times so via an auction process, you might have users which want like a baseline which they do always have, or even users which uh, don't opt in this auction process and all. Also, if you are sitting in basically a big bullshit company or something, um, then you may be interested in not actually doing this with real money, but like with tokens you give out to your different sections and they uh, use them to uh, basically, yeah, get your service or something. So even if there's no money involved, maybe an auction process is actually a good idea. Uh, so let's think about what, how this could affect your work. Uh, again, uh, we assume we have some user with a bad job, uh, some researcher, things about, uh, well, running some number crunching process, and uh, comes up with an estimation about how long this is going to take to avoid congestion. Um, yeah, to yeah, reserve this time slot, basically. Uh, yeah, this could uh, end up in uh, leasing like three time slots or something. The job uh, starts running at some point. And uh, yeah, if you uh, ended up with a wrong guess, for example, in this case, uh, the period you choose uh, is too slow or too yeah, uh, short, then you can basically release uh, uh, another two slots uh, for maybe a surplus of money because uh, something changed or the same amount. And um, yeah, get the option of uh, prolonging this uh, process. Um, if you assume that uh, on the same machine or infrastructure um, you have different kind of services and you also have this video service, um, then maybe the person uh, just, yeah, uh, is okay with paying uh, 10 bucks for an easy upload or something because it's super important or something. Um, but also, if your jobs uh, completes pre uh, yeah, um, earlier than expected, then due to having bought options on uh, the computational resource, you actually don't pay for, for the entire thing. This was the reason why I thought maybe it's uh, clever to uh, lease out options instead of the actual thing. Uh, also, um, on the incentive side, of course, um, if you see, okay, um, this uh, congestion of resources we see here reflects in the amount of money I have to spend on, uh, on this lease. I can just decide that uh, it's not worth it, in the case, for example, for a CI job, and say, uh, say okay, I just come back later or say that I want to lease uh, this amount of uh, time slots, but in the future, and maybe I get a better prices then because uh, the provider um, doesn't yet have that many loads which are planned for, for this time. 
in case of patch jobs. So in the ideal case, this would uh, steer resource usage uh, and avoid congestion and also allow prioritizing uh, different loads. Uh, in the worst case, it's just uh, the guy or girl or whatever with the most money uh, gets what they want. Uh, but usually there's incentives to save money and so, yeah, you try to uh, pay less and accept that uh, the job will run later if it's acceptable. Also, uh, the case which I didn't include here, even if you have a continuous job uh, or load like a web server, if you think about um, the usual uh, year in Congress, which um, yeah, uh, gives out tickets in, yeah, via this web shop, which is horrendously congested uh, usually, and you have the um, responsibility of running this, uh, this thing, then you can go, okay, I know that this thing is gonna online then, and uh, this will create a lot of load, so I'll lease uh, extra resources uh, for this at this point in time. Uh, for cheap bucks, because I know it uh, a month in advance or something. Um, we can also play with uh, SLA buckets. So it's service uh, level agreements you made. I uh, have heard of it uh, in one way or another. And one uh, idea which I think uh, Google published at some point 10 years ago, something I still had hair back then, uh, that's for sure, um, is the idea of uh, yeah, doing things uh, via a budget. So uh, you define a town, uh, time budget uh, for like the coming month or the coming year, and um, you are explicitly uh, incentivized to spend this downtime budget. And if you have uh, this kind of environment, then uh, yeah, you may go like, uh, okay, uh, no service down, I'm still happy. Uh, maybe it's not going great uh, sometimes, but at the end of the month, if I still have a budget left, uh, then I can just basically save money by not, uh, by using this auctioning process, by either um, basically auctioning the resources I already paid for, for other people, or um, yeah, choosing um, a point in time where uh, I see that re uh, computational resources are in high demand and just say, okay, I'll cut my service uh, at this point exactly because I can save tons of money. Uh, my original uh, motivation, uh, again, was CI, and there I can also uh, introduce uh, budgets also of some sort. So, for example, um, if I have uh, lots of money left uh, in my budget, then I can do expensive checks even on every single commit. But uh, if money is tight, I can skip a few at least uh, for, for some jobs or some checks. Um, if resources are cheap, then I can basically spend my budget on uh, checks. Or uh, I, can, I do have an uh, incentive to actually uh, skip tests if uh, it is completely pointless. Um, yeah, and this is not a thing you usually do with CI. CIs are usually set up to just run and spend, uh, I don't know whatever resources on every single comet or every single branch tip or something that got updated uh, with complete disregard to uh, the amount of uh, resources uh, basically spent on this job until the timeout uh, of like an hour per uh, CI pipeline kicks in. Um, so if we have an auction, we usually start with a base price. And if I am an infrastructure provider, for example, I would usually 
choose them at utility costs. But, uh, and this is another idea which kicks in, can actually take energy costs into account. So um, let's assume, uh, this is not a thing data centers usually do as far as I know, that uh, I have a contract with an energy provider, uh, which uh, has some yeah, variance basically, uh, depending on how much energy is in the system. For example, if the sun is shining and the wind is blowing, energy is cheap. If it's not, then energy is expensive. This creates additional incentives which I can uh, propagate to my users and end up with uh, a system which is uh, more economically friendly. And I can even uh, downscale a bit um, my, uh, what's called, a buffer ring batteries and stuff which I usually have in my data center. Um, yeah, and in the case of uh, yeah some basically cable going bust and my uh, yeah me being dependent on my diesel generator in the basement, I can actually start uh, increasing the base cost for yeah uh, auctioning out uh, resources uh, to keep um, basically my expenses cheap uh, and incentivize users to do something later when I get uh, energy again, or um, basically stop auctioning new leases out. Also, I can go uh, different routes and do the same stuff with uh, other resources. Uh, this is another beast, uh, which I don't have, uh, didn't have uh, thought about yet in detail, but maybe there are also some uh, possible benefits, let's say. Yeah, uh, this was my talk. Uh, maybe not all of you are brought to death again. Uh, I take questions. Thank you. So if you have a question, please raise your hand. Yes. I also have another idea or, or question where I would like to have your opinion. Um, so uh, about the, the energy or base it on the energy, energy consumption. Mm -hmm. So do you think it would be also be usable for this uh, control energy? That's what I found in Google Translate, Regelenergie, that if you have like uh, someone needs to provide energy within a few seconds or within one second or so, is like uh, when you stop your computations, is that fast yeah, enough to provide um, this kind that's, of energy? That's actually a good point because um, I read that uh, there are actually talks of some energy providers or network providers with uh, data centers um, that they can actually um, basically provide uh, backup power for the overall grid um, using their buffer batteries. Uh, but um, of course, they don't actually want to do this mainly because they want to keep their SLAs, basically. Um, but if you basically create a system where it's easier to shed loads at any given point of time, this can create another opportunity where you um, basically make it easier to provide power back to the system uh, via your backup batteries or even your diesel generator if uh, it's uh, well, if you get enough money, let's say, yeah. Yes, next question, please. Do you, <coughs> do you have an idea how the spitting process could be maybe automated so that the, per, uh, uh, the yeah, people yeah. running the workloads don't um, have to worry about allocating this capacity manually? Yeah, of course. Um, uh, one thing which I didn't tell is that, in my opinion, this should absolutely be uh, be uh, automized, and you can do this um, maybe uh, cleverly. Um, for example, with with your CI system, you can uh, maybe uh, create a bot which uh, yeah and basically throw a game theory at it uh, to tell it that uh, it should save money uh, by being smart, basically. Um, yeah, the usual suspects would uh, come around the corner with some blockchain or something. 
Uh, yeah, no. Um, of course, uh, you have uh, the usual problem with creating trust and uh, accountability and stuff, but you can do this with regularly REST APIs. It should just be, uh, yeah, if it's not standardized, then you have another vendor login basically, and that's the thing. But yeah. Any more questions? Come on, come on. Uh, in the meantime, um, so I often heard that auctioning is used to discover the maximum price you can sell a product for. Uh, would there be a danger that uh, prices in for data centers are going to rise with this idea? Maybe, maybe, maybe not. I mean, the um, you have so many uh, providers for this. Of course, if Amazon does that and uh, uh, customers are stupid enough, then prices will go through the roof. But yeah. <laughs> <laughs> So maybe it's a good incentive for them to implement it. <laughs> yeah, but but also, um, I mean, this this is the whole. Uh, I've actually had to read through this uh, Gaia X proposal, which is floating around through the EU, and uh, the whole idea behind uh, this thing, which may end up being uh, an actual system at one point, is that. Um, you don't have a vendor login, and if you don't have a vendor login, uh, then a new data center operator, which uh, is a lot cheaper, but uh, does ha basically have the same features and the same uh, basically operational security, uh, provides the same uh, assurance levels and something. Uh, yeah, then they can basically pull customers again. Makes sense. Any more questions? No, all right, then thank you for the talk and thank you for being here. Yeah. Have fun at the GPN. <laughs> <laughs>